Hello everyone, this is Chuck Carnivale, co-founder of FastGraphs, the Fundamentals Analyzer software tool. With this video, I'm going to cover 3M Company, and I want to explain a little bit about what I'm trying to do by evaluating this stock. The first objective I have when I open a, a stock on FastGraphs is I try to determine whether or not the stock is research worthy or not. In other words, does evaluation make enough sense for me to spend any time learning more about the company? And so from that perspective, I consider FastGraphs one of the better risk assessment tools out there. Now to put that into perspective, if you look at 3M back when it peaked here in January of 2018, and I'm using adjusted operating earnings, I'm also going to show in this video how I don't rely on just one metric when I'm making these determinations. So we have this very high valuation, a blended P.E. Of, of 27, which is significantly higher than its normal P.E. of 20, even for this long term time frame, and significantly above what a theoretical fair value calculation ought to be using a discounted cash flow formula. So the orange lines of P.E. of 15, the blue lines of P.E. of 20, and we could see the P.E. was very high. Now, what that did was that led to thus far a drawdown of just over 30 percent. and you know, you did get a little bit of dividend income, so it, that re mitigates the risk by dropping the loss down to 27.7%. And then if you annualize that, it's running about 22%. But the point is, one of the ideas of looking at a stock and trying to find one that it's fairly valued is you're looking to see if the investment's sound. The idea of an investment being sound simply means that your chance of losing money has been mitigated. doesn't mean that you can't have a short-term drop in the stock price, but if a stock falls from fair value, it's almost surely going to go back to fair value, where if a stock falls from being overvalued, it could take a very, very long time. So that's one key. Now, another thing that I talked about extensively in the written portion of the article associated with this video, I talked about calculating precise rates of return objectives. All right, so I'm going to utilize the normal multiple here and try to explain to you what I mean by that. So I'm going to pick a normal multiple that makes sense. Now let me talk about that a little bit. You've got some very high valuations here, some very low valuations. So as I change the time reference on this graph, which is another feature I really like, it's really a dynamic tool in that it recalculates these things based on the calculation of the data set over the time frame being calculated. So I'm more comfortable looking at a more conservative 18 PE on 3M than I am the 20 or 21 PE. So I'm going to use the drop down here on the normal multiple and I'm going to go ahead and pick an 18 PE. So now what I have here is I have a reasonable valuation that has historical precedence. In other words, if I look at this graph, you know, even if I look at it long term and now even though I've switched this back to 20, I can see that this stock trades above the 20 times earnings quite a bit. Also is traded below it, especially in the recession. The recession, you know, of course, brought the valuation down to where it was actually even fairly valued based on the orange line, which I still consider to be optimum. But if, again, as I shorten the time frame, I start seeing that over this time frame, I've got this 18-ish PE. Now, these numbers are precisely calculated, but they always represent a range. And in my mind, I always think of a range. So here's what I'm trying to get across. When I'm looking at this, I consider this investment sound now based on the normal valuation that the market has applied to adjusted operating earnings. All right. However, let's analyze what we're looking at here. First of all, if you look at this graph, the first thing I want you to notice is you see a expectation of a down year for 2019. Analysts are forecasting about a 9% drop in earnings for this fiscal year, which is also a calendar year. And when a stock is highly valued like this, then it becomes vulnerable to this kind of bad news. Now, when I look at this stock longer term, a couple other perspectives I think are important that I would like to go ahead and point out. Number one is, you know, 3M did have a modest down year, very similar to what we're expecting right now during the recession of 01. It had another down year, almost equal to the one we're expecting now in the recession of 2009. It had a down or a flat year, if you will, in 2015. Earnings only grew by 1%. And then now we're expecting a down year for 2019. But the point is, this is an impeccably high quality company. Increased its dividend, you know, it's a dividend aristocrat. It's also a dividend king. I think it's been over 60 consecutive years that this company has increased its dividend, not just paid it. They've paid an uninterrupted dividend for over 100 years. So I've got a really nice dividend record here. I'm also going to an analyze growth rates. I've got 8% growth rate long term. If I drop this down to like, you know, a 
nine or 10 year historical graph with some forecasting, I'm now down to 6% growth. And I want to make that point so I can go through all these numbers. I'm not going to do it for sake of this video, but a six or 7% growth rate is more the norm in recent times than the 8% number historically. So the company's getting big. It's got a hundred billion dollar market cap, 115 billion total enterprise value. So it's becoming a big company. It's becoming hard, you know, develop products that move the needle. But the company does spend a lot of money on R&D. But regardless, when I look at their performance, now this was slightly overvalued here and it's now slightly undervalued. I've got 8% growth. When I look at performance, I'm getting a 6.8% growth, annualized growth over this time frame, which goes back to December of 99. That's better than the S&P, which averaged about 4.2% over this time frame. But the dividend advantage to me is one of the great advantages about owning a blue chip, high quality dividend growth stock like 3M. You know, I've got two and a half to three times more dividend income cumulatively on this stock over historical norms. So, you know, this is the kind of company I like. It's double A minus rated, has under 60% debt, which is not necessarily a plus or a minus in my view. So now as I go into forecasting, I'm looking at forecasts going forward. Now the average forecast for these specific years, and by the way, I want you to notice the number of analysts. It's 15 analysts dropping down to 11, dropping down to three. So I usually stick to the first year or two, and maybe sometimes I'd go out to the third year in this example on 3M. If you notice, the company does have a good analyst scorecard. Analysts tend to get the forecasts right. That means the company gives good guidance, but keep in mind, they also lowered their guidance, which is part of what caused this drop. But notice the stock drops from being way overvalued relative to historical norms to now being fairly valued, but just fairly valued isn't enough. You also have to recognize that we're also looking at a decrease in earnings here. So if I go out to year end, in theory, if it trades at an 18 multiple, which is approximately what it's trading at now, you're going to make less than 1% annualized on the stock. If I go out a little further and go out to 1231 2020, now I'd be looking at making about eight and a half percent annualized total return, which would be acceptable. Considering the quality of 3M, I would call that a good rate of return, and I would also consider it reasonable. Now, I also like to check the long-term growth rate, and if you recall earlier, I showed you that recent earnings growth has averaged about 6%. So now we're looking at a, a group of analysts, there are only two, by the way, but I'm looking at a long-term forecast of about 6.3%. Now let me show you something else I do when I'm looking at adjusted earnings or reported earnings. I also then check the external links. I'm going to go down here to Yahoo and Yahoo gives specific earnings estimates as well that I can check against the data I'm getting from FactSet. But I'm going to look at the next five years according to analysts. I believe that Yahoo gets them from Reuters. I have to double check that. But anyway, these guys are forecasting 4.21%. While I'm here, you can also see that we're looking at $9.52 for 2019 and $10.46 for the next year. So when I go to fast graphs and look at the data, I'm looking at, you know, slightly different number. I'm looking at a historical earnings of 950 and 1050. Now, by the way, I'm using the trend line forecast here. Let me go to the estimates here. I'm looking at 950 and 1050. Now, the trend line is 6% by the couple of analysts on FactSet. It's only 4% if I'm looking at, you know, what the analysts at Yahoo say. So, but those numbers are, you you know, within a reasonable range. That one's not 12 and the other being three. So I've got, you know, I'm going to say a 6% number. I'm pretty comfortable with that. I can utilize the 18 PE, which means that I would have an opportunity to earn double digit rates of return based on adjusted operating earnings going out on 3M over the next three to five years. All right. So I've kind of spent a little time here kind of going through how I utilize these metrics, but then I still haven't made the decision to, to dig a whole lot deeper into 3M. I do like the valuation, you know, it's almost a duh statement. Obviously, a lot better today here than I do when it was up here. But let's look at it from some other metrics. Let's look at gap earnings because gap earnings tell me a lot about the business, not necessarily much. I don't use gap earnings much for valuation, but when I look at gap earnings, 
uh, or diluted earnings in this case. You know, there's not a lot of accounting hocus pocus going on in 3M. I like that. So it actually does look okay on a gap earnings basis, which tells me that the company's earnings report is reasonably clean. So I like gap earnings, but again, that's not a valuation metric I often use because it can it can have on certain companies a lot of accounting convention, non-recurring uh, charges, non-cash charges, etc. Next, I'm going to go looking at cash flow. Now, I especially like to look at cash flows when I'm looking at dividend growth stocks. Note that 3M does offer a 3.3% current dividend yield here. So valuing a dividend paying stock, a dividend growth stock on cash flow can also be very, very useful. Now, I see a much better correlation here to operating cash flow. This company trades at about 15 times operating cash flow, more or less historically. It's currently trading at 15.7. So I would call that on the upper range of fair value based on operating cash flow. And again, when I go to forecasting, and I'm going to go to the near term estimates again, if I'm using that 15, which you know the normal in this case, and just the regular formula graph are going to be very similar, I'm looking at five to 9% rates of return out for the next couple of years. That's pretty attractive for a company of this kind of quality, especially in today's market. So I like it based on operating cash flows. But another thing I do with cash flows, I even often take price off the graph. I'm looking at our operating cash flows covering the dividend. This white line is the dividend and the area below the white line shows the dividend payout ratio in this case of cash flow. So the company's paying out, you know, about half of their operating cash flows now, maybe slightly less. If I go here and look at it, it's paying, well, between 40 45 and 50% of its operating cash flow. So, you know, that's okay. The main thing is, though, I've got plenty of cash flow covering the dividend. Now, my other asset test I like when I'm looking at dividend coverage, I like to look at free cash flow, which is the money left over after what the company has to spend to run the business. Now, with free cash flow, I'm also seeing dividend coverage. And this is really, again, I called it the asset test a minute ago. If I've got free cash flow covering the dividend, I just kind of get a warm and fuzzy that I think the dividend is probably secure and safe. Now I attach that to the fact that this company's paid an uninterrupted dividend for 100 years, which means management cares about the dividend. I also recognize that they've increased their dividend, you know, for 60 consecutive years or so, you know, it's certainly over 25 years, which makes it a dividend aristocrat. I start to put together a piece here that tells me that this is probably a, first of all, very high quality dividend growth stock. And I'm starting to see valuation references now. So now I'm going to go to EBITDA or earnings before interest taxes, depreciation, and amortization. So now I'm going to bring price back into the equation and look at it on a price to EBITDA. Now, once again, I see a kind of a normal price to EBITDA of about 11. I think that's real important. That's been what the normal valuation is. Currently trades at 11 and a half, fully valued, but okay, reasonably valued. I go into my forecasting graphs again. I've got my 11 PE calculation here. I'm getting rates of return based on EBITDA of, you know, four and a half, five percent, six percent looking at what EBITDA growth is. So, you know, I'm still staying within this realm of, let's call it six to eight percent potential rates of return, looking at the company based on EBITDA. Now, I'm not going to stop there either. I'm also going to look at enterprise value to EBITDA, which is really the same metric. The orange line isn't going to be as relevant here as I go to this metric as the blue line. But once again, I just get a confirmation that I have a normal enterprise value to EBITDA of about 11. So that's historically normal for this company. And again, once again, I feel very comfortable there. Now, I'm going to start looking at some other aspects also. I'm going to look at sales. One thing I want you to notice, even though earnings have gone down, I'm going to take the um, price the sales off town. I just want to just look at pure sales here. Sales growth has been good. The company's, you know, ended last year at about $32.77 billion. Last year, they, you know, they generated $31.66 billion in sales. That's not great sales growth, but it's good sales growth, especially considering the fact that their operating earnings are expected to be down a little bit. So when I put it all together here, what I'm discovering is I think 3M is a attractively valued stock now, and it's worthy of being, you know, further scrutinize. But I want to make a couple of other points before I go on. When I'm looking at these other metrics like EBITDA and stuff, I'm getting a perspective. I'm actually using a real world back test. I'm not just saying, you know, relying on a statistic, oh, the normal price to EBITDA is 11. I'm actually evaluating that over this period of time. I'm analyzing the data that I'm looking at. Now, I also need to be aware that during bad times like the Great Recession, you know, we saw here the normal price to EBITDA got down to four 
or five. That could occur again, but I do want you to notice that it recovered and start moving back up towards that 11 EBITDA very quickly. And I make the distinction between a price dropping from an overvalued position like we've had recently versus a price drop dropping from a fairly valued position. I believe this price drop could take an extraordinarily long time for the company to recover. But nevertheless, what I've determined here in, in at the end of this video here is that I think this company is worthy of more research. So now I'll go into the ex external links. I'll always go into the company's website. I'll go here and I'll look around for, you know, investor services or investor relations. In this case, I'll go into the investor relations. I'll look for slide presentations. I'll go through the slide presentations. I'll also like to look a little bit about the products. You know, the, in this case, 3M has products for business as well as consumers. So I'll spend quite a bit of time in the company's website looking for information. I'm also a subscriber to Morningstar. So I'll go into Morningstar and I'll look at the Morningstar analysts are expecting on the company. We have a you know full analysis here. I don't necessarily, again, I, this is all information. I'm starting to dig deeper under the hood and spend some time evaluating the company. I'll go into our fund graphs, which is financial underlying numbers. Once I've made the determination that the stock is research worthy, I like to start out by looking at things like gross and net profit margins, returns on equity, returns on capital. I like to see not just what the numbers are, but whether they're trending in the right directions or not. And again, I'm spending my time now trying to see if, you know, if I found a stock that appears to be research worthy. Now the question is, you know, what can I learn about the company to give me the confidence that I think it's going to be a great investment? I think 3M today is very sound and attractive. And that simply means I don't see a lot of downside going forward, whether it's a great investment or not. Frankly, I'd like to see it a little cheaper, but not much. But anyway, this is a dividend growth stock of impeccable quality that, you know, you might either want to start watching now or you can even start building a position at these levels. I feel good enough about the company to say that. This has been Chuck Carnival saying thanks for watching. My next video will also be on an individual stock similar to this one. Thanks again.